Hello, if you have an ideal logic combination boiler and you have a message in the display saying low water pressure, in this video, I'm gonna show you what you need to do to top up your boiler and get it back up and running again. Now to get the boiler back up and running again, we need to turn a couple of handles on some valves underneath the boiler. Now these handles aren't always in the same position, so I've filmed this on two separate boilers where the handles are in different positions, so you will know exactly which handles you should be turning. At the end of the video, I'll quickly show you how to bleed your radiators, but more importantly, how often you should be topping up your boiler and the problems caused by topping up your boiler too often. If your ideal logic combination boiler doesn't look exactly the same as this one and the round pressure gauge is underneath the boiler, it's most likely you have the older version of this boiler. And the handles are very slightly different, but the process is still the same to top it up. And I made a separate video all about that when you can click on the link above now or down in the description to watch that video. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video, or in the cards above. So here we go then, this is an Ideal Logic Plus Combi C30. And in the display, there is a message saying low water pressure. And also when we look at the gauge, that is also reading zero. Now the display is scrolling through three messages. Message one reads with boiler off and system cold, fill the system to one bar. The second message is reading bleed your radiators, refill the system to one bar. And finally, the third message reads, if the fault persists, contact your installer. Now to get the boiler up and running again, we need to put some more water into the system and change this pressure gauge so it is reading between one and 1.5 bar. Now to do this, we need to go underneath the boiler and open two valves. Now, if you look on the right hand side of the boiler, you'll see this piece of pipe at the front here and that's called your filling loop. And it's this blue valve here where you're interested in and this other valve here we're interested in, which also has a blue handle. Sometimes these handles are black, so just bear that in mind. Make sure you turn exactly the same handle, whether it's black or blue. Also, the valve on the right may not always be in the same orientation. You can see how this valve on the left is in the same place, but the one on the right here is in a slightly different orientation. It's on the side of the valve. So you may find this right hand valve has been turned and is in a slightly different orientation, but it's definitely this one that you want to be turning. And don't get confused with the black valve, which is behind this blue one. That is not the one you want to be turning. Now, what we need to do is to open both these valves. Now, it doesn't matter which valve we open first. Uh, we just need to open both of them, which would then let some water go into the system. It'll go through the filling loop into the central heating system where it will then top the boiler up and get the boiler working again. Now I'm going to open this valve here first. I'm going to turn the valve. It goes in a clockwise direction like that. You can now see the handle is in line with the valve. So that's the orientation which it should be in when it is open to fill up the boiler. I'm now going to open this valve here. When I do that, I should hear some noise as the water goes through the filling loop and starts topping up the boiler. Now we want to keep watching the pressure gauge when we're doing this because we don't want to put too much pressure in the boiler. So I'm going to keep my hand on the handle, open the valve slowly and then keep watching the pressure gauge and seeing the pressure rise. You can see that pressure is steadily rising up. Don't take your hand off the handle, keep it on there because you don't want to be fumbling around trying to find the handle and then end up putting too much pressure in the boiler. And this may take some time for the pressure to rise but just take your time and watch that pressure steadily rise. Now when you get near one bar in pressure, the boiler will come back to life and start working again. So that's the boiler back up and running again. If you've got your central heating selected, that will now start running. But I'm gonna to keep topping the pressure up. I'm gonna take that pressure up to 1.5 bar. And you can see at the moment it's just reaching one, it goes to 1.2. 
There it is, coming up to 1.4. I'm just going to go that little bit further up to the 1.5. And then as soon as I see the pressure gauge reach 1.5, I'm going to close this valve. Like that. There we are, that's that one shut. Then I'm going to close this one here also. Make sure that they are definitely both closed because you don't want to be continuously filling that boiler up and then overpressurize it because that will then give you more problems. You can tell that they are closed because the handles go across the valves. When the handles are in line with the valves, it means that they're turned on. So you can see from this picture here that they're across the valves. And if they're in line with the pipes, it means that they are still open. So make sure that the handles go across the valves. And that's it. Your boiler is now topped back up again and it should be all up and running again. Now you can see the pressure gauge is reading just under 1.5 bar and I like to take it up to that pressure because that's what other manufacturers recommend and it just gives you that little bit more room before you'll need to refill the boiler again. That's especially so for older people because they don't like to touch the boilers at all and obviously it gives me a little bit more time before I may need to go back again and just top that pressure up for them. Now we can just test that the boiler is working properly by putting on a central heating or a hot water but I'm going to put the central heating on and I'm going to see the radiator symbol will now change to saying on as you can see there and then you see the flame has appeared. You'll see the pressure gauge will rise when the pump's running that's perfectly normal but it's a good idea to just to keep an eye on that pressure gauge over the next few days make sure this doesn't start going over two towards two and a half and three if it is then it indicates that you have another problem on your boiler and you want to be looking to call an engineer leaving the boiler running at a very high pressure will just lead to more problems now if you come to top up your boiler and you find it's got this little cap on the front of the valve here all we need to do is to remove that cap like this that cap will then screw onto the little clip which is dangling off the pipe there. See, it just goes on there like that. So that just puts it there for safety so you don't lose it. And then we can reconnect the filling loop. Just make sure that that black rubber o-ring is on the valve before you screw this up. And then do it up. Nip it up nice and tight because we don't want water dripping out. And then check the other one and make sure that's nice and tight also. And there we go, that's the filling loop reconnected. So here's my radiator and I can tell it needs bleeding because it's cold at the top here and it's hot down here. That means there's a little bit of air in the top here which just needs to be bled out. And we do that through this bleed valve here. Now I've got a little bit of tissue here to catch the water when it comes out. And I've also got my bleed key. Now these little white things on the end here, these turn and there's a hole in the end there to let the air out. So just take your bleed key, put it into the bleed valve and turn it and open in your valve. And then you hear some hissing and you get a bit of water dripping out possibly. And just keep waiting for the water to come out and just catch any drips. Now it's a really good idea to put a towel down when you do this because it is easy just to uh, spill water on the floor and you don't want it going on your carpet because it can be very dirty. So make sure you protect your carpet. And there you go, that's it. The water's come out, shut the valve again, dry up any little drips and there you go. So your radiator will be hot to the top now. After you've done that, you just want to go back and check your boiler pressure again and see if it needs topping up anymore. Now, how often should you be topping up your boiler? Now, it's recommended between two and three times a year. Any more than that, and you start adding a lot of oxygen to your system, which is in the water. Now, that fresh oxygen in the water will start rusting away your radiators. That rust then turns into that black sticky sludge called magnetite. That black magnetite then gets washed around your system and ends up in your boiler, where it starts blocking things up and making it very inefficient. If you are topping up your system more than three times a year, then it's most likely you do have a very small leak on your system somewhere. And then you may want to consider causing an engineer to come and take a look at your system. Also regularly adding inhibitor is a really good idea because that inhibitor will help prevent the corrosion which will stop the magnetite from forming. And of course you can watch my videos all about how to add inhibitor into your system and you'll find this in the description below. Right that's about it then so I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video then you can click on the link just here and if you found my video helpful in any way then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and like I said that will help others to find your video and if you enjoyed the video then you can click on subscribe and if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. 
And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.